Hello! This is another e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the really cool features of edcanvas.com. This tool is an excellent resource for teachers to either provide access to screened content for students, or for students to research data and then use these resources as the proof basis of their research. The principle of the tool is that it allows a user to create content and organise it into a logical grid. So, let's get into it. The first thing I have to do is sign in. Now that I'm signed in, I can look at my account settings under my profile in the top right hand corner. Here, I can investigate the options available to me. Most of the options here are pretty straightforward, or denied to me because I'm not a premium user. What is of interest though, is the connect to web accounts option. In here, I have already linked my Dropbox and Google Drive accounts. Now that I've done this, I can get files from my computer into my Ed Canvases if I need to. More on this later. To get out of this screen and to start creating a canvas, I need to click on the Home option in the top left of the screen. This is my dashboard. Here I can look at student canvases from different classes if I've set up that option. I can browse the public gallery or create a new canvas, which is what I want to do. So I click on the big blue button. Next I have to name my canvas. Once I've done this, I click on the OK button and the new canvas appears. The toolbar at the top of each canvas has several options. I can choose a template layout by clicking on the left hand button. I then have several layout choices to choose from. Next I can choose a theme. Personally I prefer the coloured theme. The program assigns colour to each of the tiles as I create them. The magic of Ed Canvas happens on the toolbar to the right of the screen. Here I have access to a large number of resources that I can use or the students can use to locate the information they have been tasked to do. And using this tool could not be simpler. If I type in a search term in the search box, I can get each of the tools to search for that term and each will return content that can be dragged into an individual tile. First, I'm going to search my YouTube account and drag a tutorial into one of the tiles. It can take a few seconds for each search to populate with resources, but if we look here at this list, you might recognise one or two of the titles. All I have to do now is find the appropriate video and drag the icon to my chosen tile, like this. Another really cool thing about Ed Canvas from a teaching point of view is that all the content curated on each canvas can be viewed within the web page, so students cannot easily escape to other resources, or if they do, it is easy to spot those that have and I can act accordingly. I'm now going to carry on down the list of search options here. Next is Google. The default search is an image search and I can drag image to a new tile. Look how the icon changes so that I can easily identify what kind of resource each tile contains. Switching to the web search option, Google returns content for me again to drag into a new tile. Again this content may take a few seconds to load, but when it does it will play within the web page. All good stuff. I think Flickr is pretty self-explanatory but the Edu Creations tab is really exciting. I have already made tutorials dealing with Edu Creations, but seeing this link should really excite teachers wishing to layer apps on their iPads. I can now search for Edu Creations lessons and drag them into tiles. This means that student generated work can now be part of the evidence that students curate. I get students to use their collated data as evidence and then use the note feature on every tile to get them to synthesize their gathered data into their own words. I find that it minimizes the cut and paste plagiarism that other solutions facilitate. On this latest tile you can see that I have started to create a quiz. This is yet another feature that this well rounded and well thought out resource has included as standard. It is easy to create multi choice quizzes. All I have to do is to edit the tile. Now. All I have to do is add a question to my quiz by clicking on the add a question option. I then have to type my question and then create a list of possible answers. Remember to click the radio button indicating the correct answer for your quiz to work. It is also easy to see scores and get some basic feedback data from the tile by clicking on the view results button. Obviously a user who does not own the canvas can click on the submit button to see if their results are correct or not. This quiz feature is a really good way to get other students to interact and collaborate with other students' tiles, or for a teacher to use with their entire class.
Here we can see what another student would see when they click on the Submit button. The Insert Web Page feature allows us to add even more content to our canvas. Within this option there are some presets that we can use to good effect, inserting a Prezi presentation for example. But I'm going to show you how I can insert one of my own EduCreation slideshows directly into a tile rather than trying to search for it. I already have my EduCreations account open on another tab. Once in EduCreations, I click on the presentation I want to share and click on the embed code link on the right of the presentation. In the new pop-up screen, there is an embed code that I need to copy. Back in Ed Canvas, I paste that entire embed code in the search bar and the presentation appears. I can now drag this into a new tile. This feature is really cool, especially as I like to layer the Haiku deck with the EduCreations app, and now putting this whole thing into an Ed Canvas is the cherry on the cake. The last thing I need to do with my Ed Canvas is to share it, and this is all managed via the share button at the top right of the canvas. Copying the embed code means that the canvas can be embedded into my chosen blog, wiki, learning management system or web page for others to view and comment upon. I can even tweet the links out. As I say, this is a well-rounded and complete e-learning tool. In short, it's fantastic. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more e-learning tutorials. Until the next time, keep practicing!